Hi everyone. So today we are having a conversation with our good friend Bianca, who we've known for the last six months or so, and we've worked together in various forms over that time. And the reason why I wanted to speak to Bianca today and share this conversation is that we whenever whenever we speak, we always have such rich conversations and whether she she admits it or not she's an incredibly wise young woman so we wanted to kind of share that with everyone everyone else so they get a bit a, a little slice of that as well so hi bianca thanks for joining us thank you for inviting me <laughs> not at all so so yeah so what we wanted to talk about today was just kind of how how you've started to see things around recovery a little bit differently over the last say six to 12 months or so um so so yeah I just wondered whether you maybe wanted to tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of where you've where you've got to on your road to recovery um, okay, stop me if I'm going too far <laughs> or anything. Um, well, uh, well, about myself, I'm 28, I'm a mother, and uh, I have been um, living with uh, depression, anxiety, and various forms of eating disorder since I was like, 12 or 13 and um over the course of life until now it just changed and um and um i'm still in some of it especially since being a mom um but like you mentioned um i see things differently now so even while everything feels the same i see things differently and i guess that's one thing I saw that I always had this idea about recovery that uh, it's a point I would get to and I would become this image I've always had of myself since I was little. Like it, it was like I had this, um, this tape that started recording at some point of my younger self. And, and while it changed a bit over time, I always tried to get to that image of myself and that was recovery for me. It was a race. It was perfection. It was never in the now. And uh, what I saw now is that recovery doesn't mean that um, I'm not depressed, I'm not anxious, or I don't have any eating behaviors that I do not want. For example, is when I was younger, it was anorexia. And um, with time, it changed to escaping the, the flat waters of life, kind of, by eating, like escaping the, the, the voice inside of me that was, that's trying to, to plan, to worry, to to please um i guess everyone knows that voice and i saw that recovery is being human it's not um how can i say that it's not for example regarding food it doesn't mean eating according to this inner plan and inner idea i have what normal eating is it's it's nothing on the outside. It's getting back to trusting myself. And I see recovery that I see the sense in these things I've been suffering from. For example, I used to think that depression, social anxiety, um, and eating disorders, that's, those are my, my demons. I have to get rid of them in order to be okay. And now I see them more as helpers, which is so strange because of course I never wanted to have them, but um, they point me to when I was looking away from myself 
I think I can tell you more about that. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. My goodness, that is so beautiful. I love, I just jotted down one of the things you said, recovery is being human. That's it, isn't it? Tell us more about that and what you've just said about not needing to get rid of, you know, get, get, you know, I'll be okay when I get rid of depression, I get rid of anxiety, I get rid of the eating disorder. Tell, tell us more about that. Um, um, actually, I just saw through that a few months ago because I just couldn't keep racing anymore because I tried so hard to, to not feel depressed because I thought my life is good because it's always been my inner prison. Like my life on the outside has always been good. I was lucky enough for that to be good, but I, I felt in this thought prison and um, I uh, never knew before, I never truly realized that I'm not my thoughts and that thoughts are nothing scary. So um, um, I always thought that I'm, I'm broken and I need to be fixed. Now I see that everyone has depressed tendencies or feels low, that anxiety just means that my head is full of thoughts. And regarding depression, for example, I notice that I feel depressed because I'm trying to, to get to a specific idea of myself. I'm not okay with myself in the moment right now. If it's a happy moment, it's if, if it's a painful moment, if it's suffering or anything, that's not okay because I have to become this idea of who I am, who I'm, who I'm supposed to be. And um, um, so I saw, for example, that depression actually arises because I can never reach that point. It's actually showing me that I have um, labels put on myself that I'm trying to reach and I can't reach them because they're not real. And of course, that race is so exhausting with anxiety, the same thing when I'm with, with other people. It's so weird because I'm with other people, even with friends, and I'm sitting with them and I'm close to them, but I feel so alone. I feel like I don't connect. I feel like, and that always felt like something was completely wrong with me. And um, now I just see like there are situations I want to be in, there are situations I don't want to be in. I don't have to be this image of happy person on the outside. And I try to, 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 how do you say that? Um, like integrity has become more important to me. I feel that really, um, like to, to what I feel on the inside, to, sh to, to show on the outside in a way that I prefer to, that sounds kind of weird, but I prefer to disappoint someone else than myself, you know? So actually the depression and anxiety really is pointing me back to me. And the eating disorder as well, because trying to be so perfect and having this, this voice that you're never good enough and you failed and all the shame, like shame is so huge. I think I haven't spent a day without feeling shame about something, especially since becoming a mother and guilt. Um, then of course you want to run away from this awful feeling because I really saw that especially the eating disorder has always been a, a way to a way to survive because it was never something I did to hurt myself. I think um, really not a lot of people are trying to hurt themselves purposely, but one sees those things that depression, anxiety, eating disorder, whatever rumination and everything as things that one is hurting oneself with. But we try to help ourselves with them. For example, depression, everything shuts down because it's just too much on your mind. So it's kind of like a helpful thing. And uh, the eating disorder as well, it's, it's, it was the best way to survive, help myself and, yeah, 
that's it, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I love that. Thank you so much for that. I think there's so much truth in what you said. And as, as someone else who has also had an eating disorder, I can totally relate to that. And it's hugely powerful, I think, when we can see it in the way that you've just described. Um, because it kind of takes the it takes the power out of it somehow because it's it's kind of like it's it's not this this thing that's happening to us it's not actually this kind of big monster out there that that is kind of separate to us it's just that we've we've kind of got caught up in this in this story and habitual thinking that gives us some kind of relief in in some way and like you say it's it's kind of a way of self-soothing which i love and i can i can totally relate to that um so i just wondered all of that all of that stuff that you've just talked about what impact has has that actually had on you, not just in relation to the eating disorder necessarily, but maybe like as a mother or in relation to whatever, whatever it might be in your life? What impact um, has that had? Well, I, I can see that um, we are born free and we are born worthy. Like our worth is nothing that depends on anything. I especially saw that when my daughter was born, that like if if like if you believe in in God or not or anything else, I just found it incredible how how this life was made in my in in myself, and I didn't do anything, and it just came out, and it was not just this body, but it had a soul, like it had a character it had uh, uh i don't know it was crazy and i thought that was me as well like we all were that at some point and and when i look at my daughter i cannot imagine that being lost uh, at some point i can only see things getting on top of it like the more she tries she starts thinking about things and the more she hears things from the outside world I see that through what I talk to you, to you too. Uh, I see that that I, I can already see how a tape will start creating inside of her head, and and um, and that she's never that tape. She's her. She's just. She just is. Like she's not even her character or her personality. She, that's not even who she. Is. She just is. We all are just who we are. We're just this essence and um and everything is piled on top of it like those thoughts those um those labels like you you mentioned that too and i can see so strongly now how we are caught up in those labels for example um, trying to be to always be good trying to always be kind um trying to Eat a specific way and um, trying to move or act or accomplish like all those expectations we put on ourselves and others put on ourselves I feel like at some point those expectations from the outside from how our culture works what we see what we hear what our family says what we live in school good and bad things um, it just mixes up with our inner voice and at some point we lose that freedom of just being who we are and we start to create a story of who we are not who we should be and we start to believe that voice and it keeps on developing over life and it becomes your character like your identity and i can see that so well now i, I had no idea about that before and the thing is uh, i can see that that happens to me too regarding especially the eating disorder and but everything's connected everything actually is the same it just comes out in different ways but since i've seen that i started to question myself why is this tape or what other like how was this tape even made 
Like, who are those voices in my tape? Who are those people who, who is that culture who tells me who to be, how my body has to look like, how I have to spend my time, especially right now, for example, in quarantine, how productive I have to be, what I have to have reached at a specific time, or regarding being a mother, for example, there's so much shaming about how much TV they watch, what they eat, how creative you are with them. And, and I wonder, okay, that's, that's opinions from the outside, but I'm me and I'm trying the best I can in everything I do at every moment of the day. And even if it's not productive at all or good in, no, in the way I want to be good, it's the best I can do in the moment. So I started to really question those voices I have inside of me and thinking, where do they come from and why are they more important than my well-being? And who are those people on the outside who are supposed to, like, who are telling me how to eat or how to move, like I mentioned, or that I'm not allowed to be depressed, for example. And of course, I do not want to be depressed because it is energy draining, but I feel like once you look, once you have compassion for yourself and just question, like those big what ifs, like what if I don't have to do what my mind tells me? What if I'm not my mind? What if it's like a machine trying to figure life out and getting anxious and, and crazy about trying to control everything? But what if I can let it do its thing? Like I don't even have to push it away. It just can be there like a guest. You didn't invite, but it's there. But you don't have to sit down with it and serve him lemonade and say, let's tell me what you're thinking. You can just keep on doing your thing. And that's why I mentioned recovery for me is being human because being human is feeling really horrible sometimes or a lot. But then even during the same day, there can be good moments again. But if you see that there's a story in your head and that the story was fed from outside voices and complemented by your inside things, you can start questioning that whatever it tells you, you don't have to follow it. And that your worth is never ever um, on the line because just by existing, you're worthy. And I guess that's, that's what I saw. And for example, um, regarding like when someone is depressed or has an eating disorder or has so much anxiety that they don't want to go out of their house or anything. I feel like it's never their fault because we try so hard, for example, for depression, saying that your life is so good. Why can't you just see it or just keep on eating or stop eating or, or uh, you know it, it, it feels better if you go out with your friends instead of hiding away. Why don't you just do it? And I think that hurts everyone like the person suffering so much because they want to like of course they want to do those things but it's not their fault it's not our fault what we think because we don't do our thinking it just happens we're not responsible for it so it's not we're, we're not guilty for what we think we do, shouldn't be shameful of what we think we're not responsible for what we think and what we think seems so real that of course we act on it sometimes or we act in ways to try to make it go away that's human too but um i can see that um people lost in those things are not really lost or broken people they're lost in their thought storms in their demons so while they're in it they try their best to soothe to cope with what they have but their moments what you talked about in your book too when rebecca when you said there were moments with b where you were sitting on the couch or walking the dog like there are moments where this person comes up again where where, where you can see them so when someone is caught up and depressed for example they they're not that nice sometimes they are they can be really hurtful but that's not them that's them being so caught up suffering and just trying to let all this pressure out so i try to see that and i'm not good at it because especially with my boyfriend i take everything way just too personally but afterwards even the next day i can see through it so i'm suffering 
all the time <laughs> and I still feel depressed and everything, but that's what changed. I can sometimes see through it. Okay, I talked a lot. <laughs> wow, no, thank you. So I don't apologize that I could listen to you all day, every day. <laughs> that was so wonderful. And actually, I wanted to just quickly read a quote from, which I think chimes really well with what you just said from um, someone called Glennon Doyle. Um, who mum and I are slightly obsessed with at the moment um, and she says being fully human is not about feeling happy it's about feeling everything and I and I feel like that that chimes so well with what you were saying because actually like who says we have to be happy all the time and actually would I necessarily want to feel kind of elated all the time? I think that in itself would be quite tiring. Yes. So actually being human isn't about never feeling anxious or depressed or nervous or any of those kind of negative things, but actually it's just accepting that life is going to look like that which I think is, is huge because we're not told that. Mm -hmm. I was never told that when I was younger. It was always, oh, cheer up, mm -hmm. or, oh, don't be so sad, or, oh, don't be nervous, you don't need to be nervous, all that kind of stuff. It's like trying to push those things away as if they're bad. But actually, as long as we know not to take it all quite so seriously, and know that when it's it's going to kind of change on its own and that however low we might be feeling it will it'll pass and we'll come out the other side and i think that's hugely powerful what you you mentioned glennon doyle and i love her too because she speaks the truth and what i really like about what she says is how she connects what we think of ourselves with what comes from the outside in like what was put inside of us from culture and everything and i feel like everything what you just said it, it's just so helpful to start questioning it to start questioning our own values like the the deep basic values we all have like compassion love like i truly think we're all made of love because we all look for it we can give it and those and kindness and those things those are there but there's so many other values for example she also mentioned it that you always try to be nice and have like this face on this mask and and um all those other things of how we think how life should be in everyday life even if we think of what i should eat tomorrow morning or what i should do during the day tomorrow those little things it helps so much i think to question if it's truly what is important to you like why where does this importance come from is it truly because it 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 fills you up or is it because there's some expectation in there that this has to be done to be a worthy liked pleasing human being and i got i I think she makes that really clear. And I think that fits so well to what you two talk about. There's always this, this questioning, what if I don't have to act on what's in my head? And what if the idea I have of myself, of who I am, is just that, an idea? Like, what if I'm free of all the labels? What if, because there's like, you think of things that are important to you, but you also, you're also aware that you're thinking of these things. And I feel like if you get a feeling of that distance, of that space, then there's possibility there to, to truly question where all those demons come from and, 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 and where they're trying to take you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Bianca, this is, this is why we wanted to do, have this conversation. <laughs> But I really, I want to tell you that because I, I, I told my boyfriend that I, uh, that you're going to talk to me and with him, 
I'm of course the most honest and the most vulnerable. Like with him, I'm not wearing any mask. And he was laughing and he said, to you, why? Because he always sees me crying and he always sees me in my low points. And, and, and he always laughs because he always says I give advice to others, but don't apply to myself. And, and I wanted to tell you that because even if you see things, you don't see them in the moment at all. Like you still suffer so much and you feel like, sometimes you even feel like you shouldn't even exist because you feel like such a failure. And then in the next moment, you, you see through it and you still feel all the pain, but there are little windows that give you hope. And I think that's what changed for me the most since like this year to see their windows. So when I feel the lowest, I can remember, okay, what if that's not that true? I just wanted to say that because it sounds like I, I have it all figured out, but I'm actually so low. <laughs> so. <laughs> We're exactly the same. And no, thank you. Thank you for, for saying that because and that's what we try and say a lot as well, that we're like nobody's perfect no one's got it all completely figured out there are we 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 get caught up all the time mm -hmm. but what what i found is that over the last few years for me is that i i just get a i'm getting kind of quicker at catching myself so actually like it's okay to get caught up it's okay to feel upset and sad and low and angry and frustrated and all those things but i think yeah for me for me it's knowing that that's okay knowing that it will pass but then not getting so in, invested in that in that story it was like you were saying not inviting those those thoughts in for a for a cup of tea or a glass of wine or whatever it is. It's kind of just what, what we often say is kind of keeping, keeping the back door open. So they're kind of coming through, but actually instead of keeping them kind of locked in our head and churning them over and over, they're actually just letting them pass through and, and leave on their own because that's what thoughts do by nature. Bianca, one of the things that you said um, earlier about when your daughter was born and there's this perfect being who's got no labels, no kind of concerns, no kind of question about, oh, am I good enough and any of that. And, and as we were then talking about Glennon Doyle, the, 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 the book that B and I are talking about, um, and I, I don't know whether this is the one you've read, is called Untamed. And that, and that came to mind is that when your daughter was born, she's born untamed, okay? And then we become tamed, all right? Now, this is all of us, not just women, but this is all of us. We become tamed. We follow the rules of society. Somebody said something, we take it personally. We put that label on. Oh, I'm the bossy one, or I'm the quiet one, or I'm the stupid one, or I'm the whatever it is. And that we then... Tend to, we live our lives by those made up labels. And, and this is why I adore this book because she's pointing us back to, and this is what we do as well, we, you know, pointing us back to who we really are, which is before all of the, the labels. So it's kind of unlearning to reconnect with that untamed self who will as and I, I love how you how you saw this which I know was in the book as well it's it's like I'm prepared to let other people down I will not let myself down exactly. like disappoint others before yeah. and that sounds horrible like that sounds horrible in some way but she even shared uh but that, that's why it's a, what society has made us believe it's horrible, <laughs> all right? Exactly, exactly. And she even shared um, how her daughter was talking to her and was asking her, even if I disappoint you, her mom, mm -hmm. and she said as being the mom, especially her, yeah. I, like especially disappointing the mom because we tried to please so much, especially 
also our parents mm -hmm. but that's that's what recovery is i think and not like b said before it's not just eating disorder and depression or anything because even people who've never suffered anything like that they they are tamed it's funny how we use that now um yeah but it's always always i think maybe that's i don't know maybe it's the purpose of life to come back to yourself like to to uncover things and to truly connect to to yourself to that's what you also said to treasure hunt yeah. you know what's already inside of you and i always used to think that resilience is something i have to gain i used to think that all the time and now i know it's there because it's been there from from the first moment from when we tried to walk and always fell down like it's nothing it's it's not and got up it's nothing that we have to look for it's there we just and i love for example like you and b you got taught by the specific paradigm and understanding but when you look and you write about that in your book but when you look like an author like Glennon Doyle and so many other people who don't even talk about the same understanding point back to the exact same things i found that so beautiful to see in different books and different authors and and people like um what Byron Katie and people like that you know it's always the same or even if you listen to songs if you get a touch of this you, you hear it so often and it always helps to be a reminder to to remember you're okay you're worthy you have all you need inside of yourself from the beginning on to get through life you just need maybe some help and guidance to remember that to see that Thank you so much, Bianca. I feel like that's quite a nice kind of summing up point to to end on. But I I learn so much from you whenever we talk. So thank you so so much. Um, and I hope that everyone watching has has enjoyed it as much as we have. Um, so yeah, but um, uh, check out our other. We're doing some other kind of talks with other people on our YouTube channel as well. So have a look at those and um, don't forget to hit subscribe as well.